space, 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 you want to do this excited. first one, and then I'll do the next one, or do you want me to do this first one? I am unfamiliar with this first one. Why don't you take the first one? Okay. Indy is independent.co.uk. Headline, U.S. military awards contracts for nuclear spacecraft propulsion. Cool. It just Sounds nukes, dangerous. Nukes everywhere, man. Monkey pox, and now nukes, we got nukes. NASA. Nukes, nukes, and monkeys. Nukes, nukes and, and monkeys. nukes and monkeys. The whole episode. The U.S. military has awarded two contracts for the development of nuclear space propulsion with the goal to see orbital prototypes fly by 2027. The Defense Innovation Unit of the Pentagon, which works to apply commercial technologies to military problems, awarded the contracts to Avalanche Energy and Ultra Safe Nuclear, both of Seattle, Washington. Man, what if something happens... Seattle, cool. Yeah, what if something happens at an ultra safe nuclear? I mean, you know, if, if there's an accident or something, it'd be really ironic. Is that the name of the company? Yeah, ultra so safe? Yeah, so there's Avalanche yeah. Energy and Ultra Safe Nuclear. That's good. That's, we should name our podcast the Very Good Podcast Podcast. <laughs> the Very Best Podcast. <laughs> very uh, Best Podcast. They will provide, quote, solutions that give small space, s- spacecraft the ability to maneuver at will in cislunar space. And enable high-powered payloads that will support the expansion of Department of Defense space missions, according to Excuse a me, did you say cis lunar? Ah, oh, yes, we will, uh, yes, it explains what that is in a moment here. Cis lunar, the like term... cis male? <laughs> yes. The term cis lunar well. refers to the space between Earth and the moon and the moon's orbit. Space between Earth and the moon... Uh-huh. And the moon's orbit. Yeah, like the inside of a hula hoop. Mm-hmm. Quote, hmm. advanced... I cannot <laughs> think of a funny way to attach this to anything. Advanced nuclear All technologies right. will provide the speed, power, and responsiveness to maintain an operational advantage in space. U.S. Air Force Maj Ryan Weed, the program manager for the Pentagon's nuclear advanced propulsion and power, said in a statement, quote, nuclear tech has traditionally been government-developed. And operated, but we have discovered a thriving ecosystem of commercial companies, including startups, innovating in space nuclear. Ultra safe, uh, ultra safe nuclear is researching a next generation form of radioisotope battery, which uses the decay of radioactive isotopes such as um, Ameri- what is this americium, americium, oh americium two four one and plutonium-238 to generate electricity. Similar technologies have provided the electricity for NASA missions into deep space, such as Voyager, who we will hear from in a moment, Cassini, and New Horizons spacecraft. The statement says ultra-safe nuclear technology could yield 10 times the power of, of existing radioisotope systems. Avalanche Energy, meanwhile, is developing a, a compact fusion reactor it calls the Orbitron. Fusion mm. is the same thermonuclear reaction that takes place in the sun, where hydrogen atoms are squeezed together under tremendous pressure to form helium atoms. This release releases more energy than nuclear fission, a chain reaction splitting the large atom of heavy elements such as uranium, and which powers existing nuclear power plants on Earth. The Avalanche Energy notes on its website that most fusion reactor research has so far relied on massive machinery and that no designs to date have produced more energy than they consume. If successful with their prototype, either the avalanche energy Orbitron or ultra safe nuclear radio isotope battery could power a nuclear electric spacecraft. Such a spacecraft would be, uh, would use thruster technology similar to existing satellites where electricity is used to accelerate charged propellant particles out of the thruster to generate thrust. Thrusters generate uh, lower thrusts very efficiently and so can allow a spacecraft to build to very high velocities over time while using much less propellant than chemical rockets. Uh, nu- and using nuclear rather than solar or other power sources can allow thrusters to operate more efficiently for longer and in the absence of abundant sunlight. And yeah. it goes on here. Uh, quote, so, yeah. 
this fusion. So avalanche energy is trying to do a compact fusion reactor. Yeah. Uh, I was fed an article this morning that I did not bring to the show mm-hmm. because I didn't want to. Uh, the uh, I think it was from Wired, if I remember correctly, and it was saying, oh, fusion uh, reactors don't exist yet, and they never will because we're running, like, there's no way to get the fuel for them. And I forget what it's called. It's like tr- tr- tritium or something. There's some special... Uh, mineral that we need for fusion reactors. Yeah, that's when the comet's going to come basic- down and provide all that that special substance for us. We're waiting for oh. the, the, the asteroid to give us the... Even better. This article blamed it on Putin. Well, yeah, of Putin course. Putin is the reason <laughs> well, that we're never going to have fusion. He didn't have to reactors. say that. To, yeah, I mean... <laughs> Continue. Yeah. Well, that's it. I mean, there's not much else to really... Do. Mm. I mean, I can read a yeah. little bit more here, but that's... Uh, yeah, I mean, that's uh, well, okay. See, We're going to get, me, get the nukes in space, man. Let me just wrap it up with this here. Uh, quote, chemical and solar-based systems won't provide the power needed for future DOD missions. Majweed said in a statement. Majweed. Interesting name. Nice. It's not just the U.S. military that's interested in nuclear propulsion systems. In 2021, NASA, in partnership with the U.S. Department of Energy, awarded contracts to several companies, including ultra-safe technologies to research nuclear propulsion technologies. With plans to send humans to Mars in, in the 2040s, NASA is interested in finding ways to cut the travel time for Mars astronauts. And nuclear propulsion could cut a three-year round-trip mission down to close to two years. All right, mm, shave off wow, that time year, baby. Saver. Um, yeah. yeah, how come Elon's not in on this? Oh yeah, yeah. he's uh, he's a uh, he's turning into a a, a politician. He's a Republican now. He doesn't got yeah. no time for Mars. That's it. There you go. I mean, it's just uh, you know, yeah, the pattern of nukes or nuclear something well, with with you got the Bush Junior slip up. You got the Nuclear Institute of uh, Th- Threat Institute. Publishing papers about monkeypox back in November. Yeah, and, with uh, monkeypox now, got... now becoming a big deal. Yeah, yeah it, it is really weird. And you and I were talking about this before. Is you, we've stopped hearing that Putin is going to like nuke us right. for now. Right, it's, it's like just his that's, fault. That's, it's just all everything's his fault. Well, we've we've dropped. It's dropped out of the news cycle that Putin is going to nuke us. I'm sure it'll pick back up. But it's almost like they want to keep the idea of nukes. In the in the public mind, like even though it's not Putin saying it, let's just report on nukes connected to literally every big thing going on. You know, yeah. well the nuclear uh, connection to monkeypox. You got the nuclear connection to uh, uh, Biden going to South Korea, so close to North Korea, with them testing their nukes, or at least the rocket that would carry the nukes. You've got uh, just nukes connected to everything, man, except for Putin. It's very, very odd. Yeah. Okay. Well, here's another kind of. I mean, uh, yeah, this is. An, I was gonna say you could read this one too if you want. If uh, I mean, yeah. I do. You, you sure. just take the last okay. of the show here. Well, this is also from Independent.co.uk, and the headline here is Voyager is sending impossible data back to NASA from the edge Ooh, of the solar system. Love it. Mm, okay. NASA engineering team is investigating a mystery taking place on the Voyager One spacecraft. Voyager 1 is the most distant human-made object in existence. Having launched 44 years ago, it is currently operating at the edge of the solar system, flying through the interstellar medium beyond the sun's influence. However, scientists found that the craft is receiving and executing commands from Earth successfully. But the readouts from the probe's attitude, articulation, and control system, AACS, do not reflect what is actually happening on board Voyager 1. The system maintains the craft's orientation, keeping its antenna pointed precisely to the Earth, so the data can be sent from it to NASA. While all indications suggest that the AACS is working as normal, the telemetry data it is returning appears to be randomly generated, failing to reflect any possible state that the system could be in. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. So you're in the, the picture. Long, yes. So while you're um, talking to your child there, uh, it, it's kind of confusing. You don't quite, you know, it doesn't quite like lay it on thick enough. But basically, what they're saying 
is that Voyager has gotten so deep into space, allegedly, <laughs> that they, uh, it's kind of hitting some sort of quantum barrier. state almost right or barrier where it's you know they, they can they're talking to it they can read what's going on and it's all working and they've you know are communicating with the 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 thing uh but it's sending back just strange gobbledygook about its surroundings you know that's part of what it does is like reads things around it kind of tells us what space is like out there and more or less it's just sending back signals that are like yeah it's pretty weird out here guys i'm i'm outside the solar system space is getting pretty weird i can't make sense of any of it like that yeah, something like that. <laughs> but it's, yeah, they're more like, it's basically, Voyager is sending signals back that is telling us humans, like, I have no way of explaining this to you guys. <laughs> it's just so weird out here. I don't even know what to say. You you wouldn't get it. I could try to explain it, but you wouldn't get it. Um, which is interesting, because later on in the article, uh, the one of the, the engineers, the guys who drives the thing, he's like, yeah, it's not... We were kind of expecting this. We were kind of expecting to get a certain, you know, certain distance out and just have it completely lose any ability to describe reality to us. So, yeah, we're not surprised. Uh, it'll probably die soon. <laughs> our, our precious little, our precious <laughs> little guy will probably delusions. die. <laughs> <laughs> we, got, we got Biden. He's falling apart. We got G's got a brain aneurysm. Yeah. Uh, Kim Jong Un's got a brain tumor. Uh, who else? Who else has gotten a uh, Putin? Putin's losing his mind, and yeah, now Putin Voyager has cancer apparently, and, and now Voyager. Voyager's, <laughs> Voyager's she's just floating around in the reality, man. The void of space, pushing against the the edges of of uh, you know reality. existence, yeah, is he, uh, they, a difficult the, thing for a little robot. It hit the firmament, the 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 reality firmament. You know, it does kind of seem that way. I, I you know we've been I don't know if we followed it on the show, but I've been following Voyager. You know, in the past few years is when uh, he got past Pluto. And when mm -hmm. he got past Pluto, he kind of did something similar. Mm -hmm. He sent a little <laughs> message like, oh, it's pretty weird out here, guys. <laughs> like, yeah. uh, kind of changed the paradigm of what we thought space was outside the solar system. And yeah, now he's just losing his mind. Um, he's 50 years old, this, ro this well, little he's guy. 40, 45. 40, 40, 45. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, he's, he's only got a few more years yeah, in him. Thing, and that thing's older than I am. And I feel yeah. old. That's crazy. I know. It's it's impressive. It's it older impressive. than guns. Can you guys believe it? <laughs> what are these what's the CGI on independent.co.uk with uh oh it's, I guess it's the trajectory of Voyager and it's all yeah, CGI they, it's man. actually real footage <laughs> Voyager. Yeah, they couldn't get they couldn't get a camera out past Voyager to film yeah, him. I thought I yeah. thought it's sending back what, what about the pictures, man? Come on. Yeah, I mean, it's only taken them 45 the years, 45 years to get out that far. They couldn't have sent out a camera like 10 years earlier <laughs> to catch the... What is it? It said it takes two days for it to receive transmission, like back and forth. Yeah. 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 yeah that's enough time to take a picture and send it. Come on. Sure. We got the internet no now. There's cameras on this here. There's not even any cameras on this little guy. Hey, that's the funny part. Upgrade yourself. Come on. Yeah. What? Get the AI. Can you upload AI? Can we, can via we attach something to radio uh, signal? the nuke? The nuke ships, this nuke spacecraft, and you know, give him a maybe. An that's iPhone. why they want the nuke, the nuke spacecraft, <laughs> so they can go get Voyager back. <laughs> or like their little friend. Go get Voyager and, and upgrade him. You know, Voyager <laughs> is also the satellite that has the golden record on it. Yes. The, the alien communication record we which sent was, out. Which was no good because I think recently we reported, it might have been one of the solo shows I've done recently. Yeah. Where, uh, yeah, they're, they're sending out, um, you know, birthday suit versions of the human. And yeah. uh, they're saying, well, it's you know, it's problematic. Appealing, appealing it's, to the aliens. And it was very. Uh, oh, yeah, there's that. Yeah. It's Genesis also problematic six. because uh, they, you know, 45 years ago, they inscripted. Uh, 
just two genders. I know. On, yeah. on the they're not going to be up to there. speed on the latest developments on on Earth. Yeah, they must upgrade. I know. They'll, oh, they even if they find the golden record, even <laughs> if they find a way to decipher the gobbledygook on there. <laughs> Uh, and follow the map to Earth. They'll get here and be so confused. They'll, the, the aliens will land. They'll step on out and they'll say, "Guys, I think we got the wrong place. This golden record says that there's two kinds of humans, and uh, I'm seeing here uh, anywhere between says. seven. Yeah, this <laughs> I've I've received a textbook from the state of California." And it says here that there's 182 different genders. We must have found an entirely different planet. <laughs> we need to get out of here now. Speaking of getting out of here now, it's a good time to exit. 